Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I am here today with Game 3 of the 1979 World Series. And um, this particular version of the 1979 World Series happens to be the Orioles taking on the Cincinnati Reds instead of the Pittsburgh Pirates because the Pittsburgh Pirates were eliminated in a 1979 playoff series that I did between the Reds and the Pirates. So here we are with the Reds taking on the Orioles. The Reds come into this game up two games to nothing so far. Both games were good games. In fact, game one went um, into extra innings. I think it was in the 10th that the game was won by the, uh, well, the, the Reds won it in the 10th by scoring, I believe, two runs in the top of the 10th. And uh, and then game two, uh, the Reds won, I believe, seven to five. So um, two very close games. The Orioles find themselves down two games to nothing, though. And uh, they will send out their stopper for this game. And that is Jim Palmer. And there's Jim Palmer's 1979 card. So he's going to get the uh, call today. And the Reds, who are playing with house money here, uh, are going to send up Fred Norman. So Fred Norman's going to take on Palmer. You might say to yourself, well, that's, that's kind of a mismatch. But it may not be. Uh, because, or it may not matter, because even if the Reds lose, they're still up two games to one. Um, and they, uh, and they are home now, having won both games in Baltimore. Um, and a little housekeeping, if you, uh, if this is the first game you happen to be watching, um, I'm going with the DH in this series, because, um, Really, the what it boils down to is that it's just it's a lot for me to keep track of pitcher batting cards and who's what the pitcher um, what the pitcher's hitting rating is and changing out the pitcher hitting card and um, and then change and also taking out the pitchers sometimes uh, before their effectiveness is up because you need to have a pinch hitter for them and that just makes another layer of um, uh, things I have to worry about and um, and do and it, it, it tends to lead to more mistakes on my part which I don't want to make um, so we will that's how we're gonna uh, be doing it um, I believe that that's it for the housekeeping stuff but if you uh, missed the first two games I highly recommend that you go back and check those out and I will leave uh, an end screen to both of those games at the end of the video in case you want to click on one of them and go back and watch so that you can get a frame of reference for where we are right now but um, yeah I mean I think that's where we're going so oh and the other housekeeping item I wanted to point out is if you remember in the first two games I had uh, Paul Blair playing center field for the Reds but in this game, it will be Caesar Geronimo. I got a uh, suggestion from a viewer that we that I actually make Geronimo the center fielder, and that does make some sense. Geronimo played quite a bit that year, and Paul Blair was really a part-time guy. Although he is a lot better defensively in center field, he is a center field one. Um, and the Reds did win both of the first two games with him in the lineup and in center field. So we'll see how it goes with Geronimo. Um, not that if the Reds lose, you could attribute it all to the fact that Geronimo replaced Blair in center field. But you would have to think maybe Sparky Anderson would say to himself, hey, you know what? Maybe I want to go back to that. Um, Sparky Anderson? Yeah, maybe it was Sparky Anderson in 79. Uh, let me know in the comments. I know Earl Weaver was the Orioles manager. So, uh, here we go. Baltimore is up first. Al Bumbry. 
he comes in and he gets a 5-6, which is a fly ball to right field. So fly out to 9. Ken Singleton is up and he gets a 6-9, which is a single. So Ken Singleton is on board. Um, and that's the first hit allowed by Norman. Eddie Murray is up and he gets a 4-11. And that's a ground ball back to the pitcher, Fred Norman. Pitchers are, all, are considered to be all to be twos defensively, at least in 79 they were. So 18 and 2 at um, pitcher is a an out double play. So they pull the double play off and they're out of the inning. So that is a one. For three double play and no runs come across for the birds in the first and we have Lowenstein or no not Lowenstein because he's on the birds we have uh, Dave Collins stepping in Dave Collins in the NLCS was the center fielder for the Reds but since we are doing DH he is the DH in this series and he gets a 6-5 which is a triple one to two or a single and that's going to be a single for Collins. He gets a board, a hit off of Palmer. And this is Palmer. They know runs are going to be scarce. So he's going to consider stealing, even though um, Dempsey is a negative three arm. He's still going to go. And he's out. Dempsey guns him. So... There is one down and nobody on now. And Joe Morgan's up in 6-7 is a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop for the birds is Kiko Garcia and he is a three. And that is a, let's see, 12 and three is an out. So he's he bounces out, six to three. And in case you're wondering, Kiko Garcia is at short for the Birds because Mark Belanger was injured for the entire series in Game 1 of the series. And Ken Griffey steps in and he gets a 3-6, which is a ground ball shortstop. So he bounces out 6-3 as well. No runs come in for the Reds. And that gives way now to John Lowenstein batting. And in case you're wondering, John Lowenstein is the uh, left fielder in this game uh, because they had the Orioles had a uh, another injury to um, oh gosh, who was it? Oh, Gary Renicky. Gary Renicky was also injured for the rest of the series. So John Lowenstein will be taking the reins from here and in left field and he gets a 5-8 which is a pop out to first. Pop out to three. Lee May gets a 6-4 and that's a fly ball center field so fly out to eight. And Doug DeSensei gets a 3-5 and that is a single one to 17. And he does get a single. So Doug DeSensei is aboard. Second hit allowed by Norman. And Rich Dower is up and he gets a 3-8, which is a walk. So the walk moves, uh, forces DeSensei down to second. First walk allowed by uh, Dan Norman. Or Fred Norman, sorry. I keep calling him Dan Norman. And then 411 is a ground ball to the uh, ground ball to the pitcher, and he is a two, and that's a ten. That's going to be something. That is a one base error by Fred Norman. So now the the Orioles have loaded the bases. All of a sudden, with two outs, as Garcia gets on by an E1, which forces Dower down to second, and Desense over to third. And uh, Norman with the air. And the bases are juiced here with two outs and Rick Dempsey up. And he gets a 3-7, which is a ground ball third base A. So he gets 
out by three. And no runs come across for the Orioles, although they do threaten there. They threaten, but they come up empty. And that's going to give way to the uh, Cincinnati left fielder George Foster leading off in the bottom of the second. And he gets a 111, which is a ground ball to shortstop. 6-3, one away. Johnny Bench gets a 3-10, which is a ground ball shortstop, so he bounces out 6-3. Kiko Garcia is busy. And uh, Dan Dreesen, and he gets a 5-7, which is a ground ball to the second baseman. That's Rich Dower, and he's a 2. That is an 18, and that is an out. So Dan Dreesen... Uh, Grounds out four to three, and the Reds get no runs there. And that brings up the top of the order. We're back at the top of the order for the Orioles to lead off the third inning. And uh, Bumbry gets a two seven, which is a ground ball third base. So he bounces out five to three, one away. Ken Singleton gets a five seven, which is a ground ball shortstop, and the shortstop for the uh, Reds is Concepcion, and he's a 1, and that's a 20, and that's an out. So, Singleton's out, 6-3. Uh, to three. And that brings up Eddie Murray. And Eddie Murray gets a walk. So, Eddie Murray's on board. Fred Norman walks him. Probably a wise move. Which gives way to Lowenstein. John Lowenstein gets a 6-7, which is also a walk. And so now we've got the same, we got a repeat of uh, last inning for the Birds, where they got the uh, first two outs quickly. But now they've got two runners on, and Lee May up. And he gets a 5-8, which is a pop-out, and he just misses getting a big hit. Pop-out to first base. So pop-out to three. No runs for the Birds again. And now we go to the bottom of the third, and Fred Norman pitching quite well. He's, uh, he's pitching really better than expected here against a very good Orioles offense. And then you got 5-4 for Ray Knight against Palmer, which is a fly ball to center. And the center fielder is Al Bumbry, and he's a 2. And that's a 16, probably is an out. And it is. So he flies out to center. One away. Caesar Geronimo gets a 5-11, which is a fly ball left. Or wait a minute. Uh, yeah, fly ball left. And the left fielder for the uh, Orioles is now Lowenstein, but he is a he is a two. And I believe that that's an out. Yes, it is. So Fly out to seven, two, fl two quick fly outs, and Concepcion up, and he gets a 4-9, which is a fly ball to right field. Okay, and then they will have the top of the order up when they come up in the bottom of the fourth. But here we are in the top of the fourth with the Sensei up facing... Uh, Norman, and he gets a 3-5, which is a single one to 17, and he does get a single. So DeSense is aboard to lead off the fourth. Third hit allowed by Norman. Rich Dower is up, and he gets a 3-3, which is a ground ball shortstop A. So that's going to he bounces into a double play, and there's two down quickly. Which brings up Kiko Garcia, and he gets a 6-12, which is a line out to third base. Line out to five. No runs for the Orioles. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Dave Collins gets a 6-5, and that's going to be a triple 1-2 or a single. That's going to be a single. Now Collins is aboard again, and uh, he was thrown out by Dempsey last inning. But that's only the second hit allowed by Palmer and the second base runner, so they're going to try it again because they've really got 
no no choice there and that's a 13 negative 3 and Collins is an A that's a 1 to 15 1 to 15 minus 3 is a 1 to 12 so he's barely thrown out and he is thrown out again trying to steal so that's two two caught stealings in this game and Joe Morgan's up and he gets a 2-5 which is a walk so there's one out and Joe Morgan aboard and now they would have they actually would have had a threat going had Collins not try, gotten thrown out trying to steal Griffey is up and he gets a 5-3 which is a ground ball to the first baseman that's Eddie Murray though and he is a 1 and that's a 1 and that's probably an out but let's check it I believe it is and it is so Ken Griffey is out and that ends the inning uh, I believe let's see one is that an out double play yes it is an out double play so Three, four, one. Let's just call it. Um, no runs there. We go to the top of the fifth. Dempsey up. He gets a one seven, which is a pop out to short. Pop out to six. Al Bumbry is up. He gets a 2-5, which is a walk. So now they have the same dilemma with Bumbry aboard. And an even better catcher arm behind the plate. And Bumbry being an A. Uh, but Fred Norman is not giving way. And there's already an out. So they are going to try to steal with Bumbry. And he gets thrown out. So, he's out one, and uh, that's a caught stealing for him. And Ken Singleton is up, and he gets a 1-6, which is a ground ball shortstop. A would have been a double play anyway. So, no runs for the Orioles in the fifth. And that brings up George Foster, who... Um, actually had let off the second inning and here he is leading off in the bottom of the fifth and he gets a three eight or oh wait a one eight and one eight is a home run for George Foster way back and gone George Foster hits a home run off of Jim Palmer to give the Reds a one nothing lead that's an RBI and a run. Third hit allowed for Palmer and an earned run. Johnny Bench is up and he gets a 5-8, which is a strikeout. That's the first strikeout for either pitcher in the game. And Dan Dreesen's up and he gets a 5-5, which is a pop-out to first base. Pop-out to three. And Ray Knight is up, and he gets a 6-4, which is a home run, 1-9, or a double. And that's going to be a home run for Ray Knight. So all of a sudden, they're jumping all over. Um, all over Palmer here in the uh, fifth inning. Palmer was cruising. And now all of a sudden, it's 2 nothing Reds, and Geronimo up, and he gets a 6-4, which is a home run, 1-9, or a double. And that's a home run for Geronimo. So three home runs in one inning off the great one, uh, Jim Palmer. I mean, who would have known? So you got a run there and an RBI there for him and a run there and an RBI for him and fifth hit and third earned run. And now Concepcion is up, and he gets a 3-8, which is a walk. And 
And now all of a sudden, Palmer has just completely fallen apart here. And Collins is up and he gets a 6-8, which is a fly ball, or a 6-9, sorry, which is a pop-out to shortstop. But not before the Reds strike for three in the bottom of the fifth and have a 3 nothing lead here. You have to wonder how long the Birds are going to stick with Palmer, although really how many options do they have, you would have to ask. And uh, Eddie Murray is going to step in to lead off the top of the sixth inning against Dan Norman, and he gets a 2-11, which is a ground ball, second base A, just missing a home run. So, 4-3. John Lowenstein up, and he gets a 1-4, which is a home run. So, John Lowenstein gets in on the action, and he hits a deep fly ball that leaves the park. And that's a run and an RBI, and Norman gives up his fourth hit and his first earned run. And now it's 3-1, to one, and Lee May is up, and he gets a 3-3, which is a strikeout. That's the first strikeout of the game for Fred Norman. And DeSensei is up, and he gets a 4-2, which is a ground ball to the shortstop, but he's a 1. That's an 11. That may be an error. And it is a one-base error on Concepcion. All kinds of crazy stuff is happening in this game. So DeSensei gets on board with an E6. And uh, let's mark that down. Concepcion with the air. And up comes Rich Dower. And he gets a 112, which is a ground ball second base A. So that's the end of the inning, but plus injury. And he gets a 4, so he's going to remain in the game. He's only temporarily injured, and he remains in the game. So 6-3. Uh, and the Orioles do get a run back, so now it's 3-1. to one. So now we have to see how Palmer fares as he goes back out there to face the big red machine in the uh, bottom of the sixth. And uh, that's going to be Morgan leading off. He gets a 1-8, which is a pop-out to first base. Pop out to four, one away. Ken Griffey gets a six nine, which is a pop out to shortstop. And there's two down, and George Foster is up, and he gets a five seven, which is a ground ball second base, and Dower is a two at second. That's a 15, that could be something, and it is, it's a one base error on Dower. All these good fielders making errors. It's crazy. So you got Dower. He makes an error and Foster gets on by an E4. And with a man aboard and two out, up steps Johnny Bench. He gets a 3-4 which is a single. And they have two outs. They're not going to uh, they're not going to press it. They got two outs and they um, uh, have a two-run lead, so they're going to let Greason hit, see what he can do, and he gets a 2-5, which is a strikeout, right between two big hits. But it's a strikeout for uh, Palmer, and you got to believe Palmer is either running out of gas or just really not as effective as he usually is, not feeling it today. And that brings up Kiko Garcia. Top of the seventh. He gets a 6-10, and that is a single. So Kiko Garcia is aboard, leading off the seventh. Fifth hit allowed for Norman. Dempsey is up. Dempsey gets a 4-8, which is a double 1-9 or a single double asterisk. And that's going to be a double. So now the birds have runners at second and third with um, with no outs. And the infield's going to come in. 
and the Reds are going to get action in their bullpen. And that's going to be... Frank Pastore will be getting up in the bullpen for the Reds. With the infield in. And a 5-10 is a home run 1-11. And that one is gone on a three. So that's a home run for Bumbry. Is that right? Home run for Bumbry? My God. All right. So home run. And uh, that knocks in three runs right there. And now the birds have the lead. A run. Three RBIs. And a run and a run. And that's three runs here for the birds. And that brings up Singleton. Singleton gets a 2-5, which is a strikeout. Uh, second strikeout for Norman. And uh, that's one away. Eddie Murray. Murray gets a 1-3, which is a pop-out to first. Pop-out to three. That's two outs, and they're going to bring in Pastore now. So Norman goes uh, six and two-thirds. And that brings up Pastore into the, brings Pastore into the game. Probably you got to figure maybe uh, that Fred Norman just ran out of gas, um, and you had to figure also that they were playing with fire, starting him in this game. But they did, and uh, that's a four-two, which is a ground ball pitcher for Lowenstein, which ends the inning. So that's a uh, a one to three, but not before the birds get three and they take a four-three lead in the seventh inning. And now some of these chances the Reds have had over the course of this game are coming back to nip them in the in the butt. And Ray Knight gets a 5-6 roll, which is a double 1-3 to three or a single. That's going to be a single for Ray Knight. And uh, that's the seventh hit allowed for Palmer. So the Birds are going to be looking in their bullpen now to see who can come up and that's going to be Sammy Stewart. Sammy Stewart is up in the uh, in the Oriole bullpen with Lee May up and no outs and he gets a 6-6 six, six, which is a fly ball left field. So that's one away. Oh wait a minute, not Lee May. Lee May, that was uh, that was Geronimo. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. So, um, six, six, yeah, fly ball left field for Geronimo. Fly ball seven, one away, runner at first. Concepcion up, and Concepcion gets a two nine, which is a strikeout. Palmer striking out his third guy. And Collins. Gets a 5-8, and that is a strikeout as well. And there are no runs there, and so let's see. Top of the eighth, Lee May coming up in the top of the eighth against Pastore. He gets a 3-7, which is a strikeout. Pastore with his first K. Doug DeCince gets a 3-4, which is a ground ball shortstop. So 6-3, two away. And Rich Dower 
gets a 4-8, and that is a single. So, Rich Dower is on with a, with a hit. First hit allowed for Pastore since he's come on in relief of Fred Norman. And Kiko Garcia is up, and he gets a 1-4, which is a pop-out to um, third base. Pop out to five. No runs for the Birds. Bottom of the eighth. Getting late for the Reds now. They're only down by a run, but it is getting late. And Joe Morgan steps in. He gets a 1-8, which is a pop out to first base. Yeah. Pop out three. One away. Ken Griffey up. He gets a 2-5, which is a single. So Griffey gets aboard with a hit. And the new pitcher for the Orioles, I forgot to mention, is Sammy Stewart. He is on in relief of Palmer. And that's the first hit he's allowed. George Foster up. He gets a 6-6, six, six, which is a single one to seven. And that is going to be a single. So Foster with a hit. That forces Griffey to second. Second hit allowed for Stewart. Two runners on for the Reds with only an out and bench up. And he gets a 5-9. And that's a ground ball second base C. So that'll move the runners over, but it's the second out. And then that brings up Dan Dreesen. And he gets a 5-4, which is a triple 1-4 or a double. And that's going to be a triple. So the Reds take the lead again. Dan Dreesen... Triples in two runs in the persons of Griffey and Foster. And two runs come in so far. And there are two outs. And Ray Knight up. And Ray Knight gets a 1-6, which is a ground ball third base. So he bounces out 5-3, to three, but not before the Reds take a 5-4 lead. And now we go to the top of the ninth. It doesn't get any better than this, really, if you're a baseball fan. Top of the ninth. The Orioles are losing by a run. Um, and let's see. He gave up... Yeah, he gave up that. Three hits, two earned runs. So, Rick Dempsey is up. Pastoria is still out there. 2-6 uh, is a walk. So, Dempsey gets on with a walk. Pastore with his only a second base runner allowed. And they're going to get, the Reds are going to get some action up in their bullpen. They will get Doug Bear up in the bullpen. I think Doug Bear came in last game, but they did have a travel day. So, it's not as critical. Um, Al Bumbry gets a 6-4, which is a ground ball to the third baseman. That is Ray Knight, and I believe Ray Knight is a two at third. That's a five. That's probably going to be a double play. No, it's an out one. So, um, Bumbry moves uh, Dempsey down to second with a fielder's choice. And there is one out now. And the tying run, 180 feet away. Ken Singleton up. He gets a 2-2, which is a ground ball second base A, so two away. 4-3. And it's all up to Eddie Murray, and Eddie Murray gets a 6-8, and that's a fly ball to left field B. And that is going to be that. Um, fly out to 7 and the uh, Orioles go down once again. 
Unbelievable. They go down 5-4. The Reds hang on to win it, win game three, 5-4. And now the Reds have a three-game-to-nothing lead in the 1979 redone World Series. Now, if you remember, the Orioles actually beat the Pirates, or the uh, Orioles lost to the Pirates after the Pirates were down three games to one, I believe, in the series. So, you know, reaching back for realism, the Orioles know that it's not, um, it's not lost yet. They just got to take it one game at a time. Hope you enjoyed the game. Um, if you like this, remember to subscribe to the channel um, and leave me some comments and a thumbs up if you like the video, if you like the game. Um, and remember to ring the bell so that you're notified when I have more games out. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.